Well, good afternoon. I've stood here every day since the start of this. And during these difficult days, I made a commitment to you. I made a commitment to be upfront, to be open and transparent about what we're facing. To be upfront about what we're doing as your government and to be upfront about what we all need to do as a province. This weekend, I went to visit one of the medical supply warehouses here in Ontario. Minister Phillips, Minister Elliott and I took a hard look at the inventory. And as I've said before, we all know that these essential items are in short supply around the entire world. The good news is we're in the process of securing massive, massive amounts of new inventory. We're working day and night, working every contact we have to acquire medical supplies from every source possible around the world, across Canada, and here at home in Ontario. We've been working with the federal government on their bulk buys of essential items. We have purchase orders and we have businesses lining up, retooling their operations and expediting production to help Ontario defend against COVID-19. But it will take time for local production to ramp up and new supplies to reach us. The reality is, if there's a massive surge of people coming into our hospitals in the next two weeks, our supply lines will be seriously challenged. So every week, every day, every hour we can push back that surge is another week, another day, another hour that we have to prepare. The hard truth is, the more time we have, the more lives we can save. If we push that surge as far away from today as possible, we will save lives. And we can't do this without your full support. Every day we've stood here and told you how you can stop the spread of this virus. If you can, please, please stay home if you've traveled outside the country, you must, by law, self-isolate. If you have a cough, a fever, or difficulty breathing, self-isolate and call your doctor. Do not gather in groups and stay at least two meters from one another. I know this won't be easy, but in these unprecedented times, we need to take unprecedented measures. You've put your life on hold, and by doing that, you're saving lives, including the lives of our seniors and most vulnerable. So be honest with yourself, be honest with your friends and your family, because the action you take today will, re will determine what happens tomorrow. It was a beautiful weekend, the sun was shining, and it was nearly 20 degrees out. From what I saw and what my colleagues saw, the streets were packed and that's unacceptable. We need every person in this province to take a hard look at their habits. Because as I've always said, every option is on the table. And we're prepared to take further action if we do not see the spread of this virus slow down in the coming days. My heart breaks when I see what's happening around the world. As the death toll from this virus rises, we must continue to take advice of those impacted. It's easy to turn on the TV and think what's happening in Europe can't happen here, but it can happen anywhere. Our story in Ontario can be different than Italy's and Spain's, but only if we all take this seriously. 
Like I've always said, we need to work together. Each of us has a responsibility in this crisis. And right now, we need above all else to protect our senior populations. We need to put an iron ring around our seniors and other vulnerable populations. We need to protect them. If you're over the age of 70, or you have an underlying medical condition, stay home and self-isolate. I want our seniors to know that we're doing everything in our power to ensure you continue to have access to medicine and essential items you need. We're actively working with grocery stores and pharmacies to find more ways to support seniors. We're asking them to please prioritize at-home delivery for seniors. Last week, we announced $5 million to deliver meals, medicine, and other essential items to seniors. And today, we're doubling that commitment to a total of $10 million. Over the last two days, we've seen an increase in outbreaks and deaths at long-term care homes. We must do everything we can to prevent further spread in these homes. And that's why we're putting an iron ring of protection around our seniors, especially those in long-term care and retirement homes. I want to thank Minister Fullerton, my Minister of Long-Term Care, for her tireless work. Based on her advice, our government is investing $243 million to protect residents of long-term care homes. This will go towards 24-7 screening of staff and residents for more cleaning and sanitation and to increase capacity and reduce pressure on hospitals. We're investing another $70 million to enable the same screening and cleaning measures in retirement homes, residential facilities, and emergency shelters. We passed an emergency order detected at long-term care homes to limit non-essential visitors, improve COVID-19 screening of staff and volunteers, and ensure that seniors get the right level of care during these uncertain times. And we all need to band together right now. We all share a collective responsibility to protect our seniors and vulnerable populations. During this time, social isolation can have a terrible effect on our seniors. If you know a senior, call them, check on them remotely, or drop off groceries on their doorstep. If you can, please donate to charities that support seniors. I know these measures today are not easy for many families. I know it's hard not being able to visit loved ones, but it's the only way to protect them. We know each moment with them is precious. And what we're doing today to stop the spread of COVID-19, it may mean one more moment with your family, one more moment with your grandchild, and that's worth everything in the world. Thank you, and God bless the people of Ontario. Okay, we'll go to the phone line for questions. First question. First question comes from Laura Stone of the Globe and Mail. Please go ahead. Hi there, Premier. Hi. Um, you've talked about wanting to protect seniors and protect the vulnerable. We reported in our newspaper today a horrifying situation in a long-term care home in Bob Cages. Nine residents have died. Half the staff have symptoms of coronavirus. What are you doing specifically to help this home? And how many more care homes are facing this exact situation? Well, first of all, my condolences and heart and my prayers go out to, to the families that have lost uh, loved ones. Uh, to get more details, I'm going to pass this over to uh, Minister Fullerton, and I should add Dr. Uh, Fullerton. There's uh, no one in our caucus that understands health care uh, better than, than Dr. Fullerton, so I'll, I'll pass that uh, question over to her. Thank you for uh, the interest in this, in this tragic situation. You know, my heart is going out to everyone uh, that has been affected by this. 
Uh, we started weeks and weeks and weeks ago understanding the risk in our long-term care homes and working round the clock to create that iron ring around our long-term care homes. And the reality is that this is a, a virus that is new to the world and it is a threat and we are doing everything possible to make sure that all measures are taken to address the issue that happened in Bob Cajun. As I said, it's, it's tragic and we have to do absolutely everything that's possible. So we're looking at really shining the light on this situation, uh, this tragic situation with increased screening, increased um, isolation for people coming in in terms of self-isolation for staff that needs to be self-isolated or admissions that are coming in from elsewhere. Making sure that anyone coming into that home as a resident will be isolated for 14 days. We need to take extra measures to address this uh, virus that is such a threat to the world and we've been doing that day in, day out at prevention, screening, and this is an evolving uh, case, an evolving situation across the world. We're le learning more and more information about this virus, and we will do absolutely everything that we can, and the Premier has said everything is on the table uh, to help this home. Thank you. And, and just to follow up, uh, will you, will you uh, commit to systemic reporting and outbreaks in nursing homes? This has only been revealed through journalism. It's not publicly reported anywhere. We don't know how many more places this is happening in. Are you now going to post it publicly of where this is happening? And are you, will you commit to testing more than three people in a home? And that's certainly something that we've been discussing with the Chief Medical Officer of Health. And he is, has agreed and is in charge of making these decisions as the Public Health Ontario uh, Chief Medical Officer of Health. So this, there will be more intense screening. There will be uh, more advanced ways to isolate individuals as they come into the home to prevent the spread. And we're looking at a, a other measures to really address this issue. It was absolutely tragic. And I want to express my condolences to everyone who's been affected. The Chief Medical Officer of Health is, is aware and acting on this. Next question. Next question comes from Alison Jones of the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Hi, actually, to follow up uh, with Minister Fullerton um, on Laura's question, do you talk about looking at more intense screening, more advanced mm -hmm. ways to isolate individuals? I'm hoping you can be a little more specific on Absolutely. any more measures you're looking at for long-term care homes. I know there are a number of steps that you've taken already. Um, is, it, is it too late at this point? Is the virus is in a lot of these home what more can be done well as i said the uh, the screening is absolutely critical so the world health organization talks about isolation testing treating and tracing and there is more we can do and uh, the way the um, the test kits were in shortage because of all across the world the demand for the test kits now we do have a supply there will be a priority for long-term care and uh, there'll be other measures taken in terms of transfers into long-term care homes. And we're looking to learn as much as we can uh, about what unfolded in Bob Cajun. This is a, a tragic event, uh, tragic for the families affected. And my heart goes out to the families. Okay, and for, um, for the Premier, um, you mentioned that you, know, you saw people out and about uh, on beautiful Sunday we had. You, the the case numbers are increasing. Um, you know, you said that we are going to have some supply issues in the next little while with medical medical supplies and, and PPE if we don't get this under control. What are you waiting for to to take another step that you hinted at is possible? What what do you need to see happen? Well, I I think uh, we've we've shown uh, as soon as I get the and our team gets the advice off the chief medical officer of health and our command table. Uh, we act immediately. When they gave us the advice about the, the schools, we acted within an hour, uh, similar to the uh, emergency shutdowns, and uh, we'll be discussing that today. And er everything's on the table right now, Ab absolutely everything. It's absolute priority that uh, we make sure that, when possible, uh, people stay at home, uh, stay in their house. I, I understand it gets a little squirrely and stuffy when you get in there and you want to take a little little walk but 
just you know driving around the stories I hear, um, and maybe you saw it too, and other people. But uh, the the streets were packed, and I understand. You know, it's warm. You know, spring is in the air, and people want to get out. But at right right at this time, the the more we can reduce the spread of this virus, the quicker uh, we can get uh, through this. Uh, we will get through this. Uh, it's just a matter of time. Uh, we we have two ways here. We can either go the the route of Italy and Spain or we can go to the route of South Korea and in times uh, Germany as well. Uh, we want to make sure that we, we get the curve to bend and start going down. It's the way I describe it uh, and, uh, with the supplies as, as well. Uh, we're, we're in a race right now. We're in a race on supplies that are, are in, in desperate need around the world and a race against this, this virus. And uh, I think everyone's heard, you know, I've always said, you know, we're right now over the next few weeks is uh, critical, absolutely critical the next few weeks uh, on which way this curve is going to go. And the more of the people can help out and uh, practice the social distancing, practice uh, staying at home, uh, the quicker we can, we can get through this. I'll tell you a story about, about the supplies, you know, both myself uh, uh, and both ministers, Minister Elliott and uh, Minister Phillips, who went to the, the supply depot. Uh, we saw the masks, we saw the gloves. Uh, we do have enough to, to keep us going over the next few weeks, a couple of weeks. And, and, uh, but if there's a surge, uh, it will put a strain on them. And we have orders for millions and millions of uh, items coming in and we are all over these people. I mean, like when I say all over, around the clock. I had a call, I'll give you an example. Had a call that uh, there was this company out in Markham that had level two uh, face masks, surgical masks, and they're, they're hard to come by. And uh, the company's called Dental Brands, Mike and Modi. And I got on the phone with him. I never met him before. I just got a lead. Like we're, we're getting lots of leads, and called him up and said, "Well, maybe we can do it." To, you know, this was, this was yesterday, saying maybe Monday or Tuesday. And I said, "You know, if you're free today, I'd like to come by and, and pick these up today to get them in the system." And the nicest two gentlemen you'd ever meet, and and you talk about the spirit of Ontario. They donated a hundred thousand. Uh, uh, face masks, uh, level two masks. The, the police took 10,000. I took 90,000 and brought them over to the warehouse. But this is the spirit. These are companies that are stepping up day in and day out. And they're just incredible people. And I, I want to thank them. And I want to thank all the companies. I, get, uh, I, I try to tell you one story every day, but that, that was a, a story. And, and they said, uh, we'll do everything we can. Uh, donate a, another 100,000. Uh, as soon as more more come in, uh, we have millions and millions of masks and and protective gloves and, and protective equipment coming in. We have uh, a lot of people coming forward with the the face shields, uh, different designs. The ingenuity of the people of Ontario and businesses are incredible. Uh, everyone's stepping up, and I'm I'm so grateful, and I, I thank each and every one of you. And uh, we will get to you. We're we're getting endless uh, requests. So it's, again, uh, there, there's no better army that I have behind me than the, the 14 and a half million people of this province. They're standing shoulder to shoulder, united, working with us, and uh, we will. As sure as I'm standing here, we're going to get through this. We're going to come out stronger on the other end, but it's the speed we get through it, and we need all 14 and a half million people rowing in the same direction and we'll conquer this. We'll defeat this COVID-19. And if we don't do that, then we're going to have a big challenge on our hands, a big challenge. Our healthcare workers, uh, they're maxed out. Uh, even the frontline responders, everyone's giving in 110%. Next question. The next question comes from Victoria Gibson from iPolitics. Please go ahead. Hi, Premier. 
Hi, We've Victoria. heard a lot of appreciation from uh, your government in recent weeks towards frontline health care workers. Um, and at the end of 2019, we saw the Ontario Nurses Association join with some other unions filing charter challenges of the 1% public sector wage cap. Uh, given the somewhat unprecedented work that nurses and other healthcare professionals are doing right now, would you consider compensation increases after this that go above 1%? Well, that's a conversation we, we have to have uh, after this. I, I really don't want to sit here and start negotiating. You know, I've, I've said even during the election, I, I don't think I said a speech in my election without thanking the frontline healthcare workers and, and nurses. I saw it firsthand when, when my brother wasn't well and my mother wasn't well and, and everyone has experienced uh, what great work uh, nurses do and uh, PSWs and the people that, that clean the hospitals and you know, if, if it was up to me, I'd, I'd just give them the bank because they mean everything. But in, there's, there's where you have to go with your heart and then the reality, but they're worth every single penny, every single penny and 10 times more. Uh, but we're, we're going to have to sit down and review that. And uh, when we get through this, you know, I, I love the, the, the frontline uh, folks out there in the healthcare and every, every area. Uh, I want to help everyone, and we'll we'll do everything we can, and we'll we'll sit down with them and and have that discussion. And just want to again thank them for for working around the clock. Follow up. Thank you. Um, the follow up is for uh, Minister Elliott, perhaps. Um, I understand that the Ontario Medical Association is in what they call urgent negotiations with the ministry over supports for physicians over the next few months. Uh, and I'm wondering if you're considering offering any extra compensation to doctors during this time um, and how close you might be to uh, an agreement. Well, as the, the Premier just indicated, that's something that um, we will deal with once we're past the issue of COVID-19. This is something where we need all of our frontline health professionals working together. And I'm really happy to say that both the OMA, ONA, and the other employee representatives, uh, we're working very well together. Uh, they are showing great support and giving us a wonderful guidance so that um, those issues can be dealt with afterwards. But right now, we need everyone to uh, participate and be involved in this fight. Next question. Next question comes from Brian Lilly from the Toronto Sun. Please go ahead. Premier, you uh, declared an emergency on March 17th and it was uh, to take effect until March 31st. Have you extended that? Are you extending that? Uh, yes. What well, did we know about your declaration of a, an emergency in the province? So we'll, we'll be extending it, uh, Brian. It goes in two weeks at a time and uh, we will be extending that. For for just two weeks? Well, it goes it goes it goes two weeks. That's the way the system is set up. It goes two weeks at a time. We renew it, so that we'll be renewing that. I know that you uh, have tried to bury political hatchets since the election um, and, and try and stay away from partisan things. But mm -hmm. the federal carbon tax is set to go up by 50 percent on Wednesday. And when I asked the prime minister about uh, an hour and a bit ago whether he would delay that. He said no, that it's important for the fight against pollution and that it puts more money in people's pockets anyway. I'd like to know your thoughts at, at a time when so many people are applying for EI, when so many people and businesses are struggling. What are your thoughts on the carbon tax going up from 20 to $30 a ton? Well, Brian, I, I'm not going to get deep into this. I, I you know, I, I want to do everything we can to put more more money into people's pockets, more money into businesses. And saying all that, I want to thank uh, the Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister, federal government. Uh, they, they've really stepped up to the plate. They've really put a lot of money in, and I, I want to thank them. Uh, that's a discussion we can have when we get through this. But uh, they've done tremendous work, and they're working very collaboratively. Uh, with us, I know the prime ministers on the on the phone uh, right across the province with all, all the premiers, uh, many times uh, constant communication. Uh, Christia Freeland, uh, what can I say? She's an absolute champion. You know, I, I, I talk to her every every single day, and any anything that we need, and vice versa, we we work uh, very very well together. Uh, we're on the same team. We're on Team Canada. 
We have Team Ontario joining Team Canada right across this province. This is how we're going to de defeat and, and beat uh, COVID-19, by all working together. And uh, we're going to put all the politics aside. But uh, they, they've done an incredible job uh, working with us. And I, again, I want to I thank them. Next question. Next question comes from Colin DeMello of CTV News. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, Premier. Hi, um, I'm just curious about, just going back to Alison Jones' question, in terms of what um, you would need to see or need to um, experience in order to uh, issue a mandatory stay-home order. I mean, we've been seeing people who have been, um, you know, breaking this voluntary stay-home yeah. order. What criteria do you need to use in order to take that next step? Well, I need the, the advice from our medical professionals and uh, chief medical officer. And I also want to work hand in hand with the federal government if they're going to do this right across the country. But what it comes down to, uh, Colin, is, is number one, one, one issue. Uh, I have all the confidence in the world and the people of this province. A vast majority, and I say vast majority of people are listening. They're doing their best to stay at home. They're, they're listening to the, the guidelines and protocol from the chief medical officer. And uh, I, I, I think everyone's doing a great job. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, Colin, if you saw it or other people, you know, you're going down by the lake and just, it was like packed and I'm thinking, wow, you know, I, I, I get it. You got to get out and get fresh air. I fully understand. Uh, but we, we need to self-isolate as much as we can. We need to. I just can't stress it enough. Uh, the next few weeks is extremely, extremely serious. I, I just can't say enough about it. We're either going up or the curve's going down. And we all have to make sure the curve goes down. And the only way we can do it, not by you know forcing people to do anything, it's cooperation. And so far, no matter if it's the business community or, or the people in general, Everyone's everyone's cooperating, and everyone's helping in the, in their own way. So please uh, do your very very best to to stay at home, and uh, don't gather with more than five people. And I you know I haven't seen that honestly I haven't seen that too often. I understand workplaces essential service work workplaces. You have to do it as long as they're practicing social distancing within the work work environment and. Uh, but uh, everyone's going to pull together. I, I know they are, uh, Colin. I know uh, we're going to get through this, and we're going to work together, and everyone's pitching in right across the board. Thank you, Premier. I have a Thank question you. for the Ministers of Health and Long-Term Care. Yep. Um, what type of personal protective equipment do uh, the staff and all of the employees at um, nursing homes and long-term care homes actually get? And if they want that type of equipment, are, are they able to dip into this general pool um, that uh, Ontario currently has? Okay. I believe that's a question that Minister Fullerton can, uh, can answer for you. So very important question, and uh, I've been on, the, on calls for the last number of weeks in contact with homes to understand what their, their issues are surrounding uh, personal protective equipment, or PPEs, as we say. And it, uh, it is something that uh, we're working with the um, Chief Medical Officer of Health to understand and make clear exactly what is needed in what situation uh, and so that everyone in the long-term care homes uh, are aware of what, uh, what they require and making sure that the uh, supply lines of PPE are, are addressed. So we're very, um, with working with the, the Ministry and the uh, Public uh, Health Ontario and the Chief Medical Officer of Health to make sure that the uh, required equipment is present in the homes. Next question. The next question comes from Jamie Gutfriend from C Plus 24. Please go ahead. Hi, Premier. Uh, you just mentioned moments ago uh, that in the next couple weeks are going to be extremely critical. And with the situation changing daily, with the numbers continuing to go up, and people continue to disobey the instructions and the guidelines from our health officials. Uh, we're getting even new guidelines earlier today from uh, Dr. David Williams, who just put out a statement um, basically saying to only leave the house if you're accessing health care services, shopping for groceries, picking up medication, walking pets, or supporting vulnerable people in the community. It didn't mention anything about just getting some exercise and going out for a bike ride or going for a walk. And given what's happening in Europe, 
of what we're seeing in New York with bodies being forklifted into the back of tractor trailers, at what point are you willing to implement stricter measures to get police to disperse large groups for people who are having house parties or to even hand out fines, tickets, arrests if necessary, and would you consider a hotline for people to snitch on others if they're not following these guidelines? Well, Jamie, good good question. You, you know something, again, I, I have to. We, we don't have enough police in this province to monitor 14 and a half uh, million people. I, I, everything's on the, on the table, first of all. I've said that from day one, everything's on the table. If I get advice from our chief medical officer and our, our command table, uh, I won't hesitate to, to pull the trigger on that. Uh, but we really uh, need the help of, of everyone. And I sincerely believe, Jamie, yeah, the, yesterday, it was, it was, to be frank, it was, it was shocking. And uh, we need people to stay at home. Uh, everything's on the table over the next few days or the next week. We're going to see how this evolves, and uh, uh, I won't take anything off the table to answer your question. I have a follow-up question for the uh, Minister of Long-Term Care. Yes. And my question is, uh, last week I had been uh, covering the, uh, the confirmed cases up at a senior's home in Markham, and from one of my, which uh, the numbers have actually continued to rise uh, as of today, I, I'm hearing from one of my sources inside that many of the nurses that were attending to the first resident that was confirmed positive was then going back into common areas amongst other nurses and, you know, basically congregating with other nurses uh, with, while still wearing the same PPEs. And from what I'm hearing is that some of these individuals um, had a lack of access or a lack of supplies of these PPEs. And given that you know, the individuals that are in these long-term care facilities are some of the most vulnerable uh, when it comes to COVID-19. How can we get more of those supplies to make sure that uh, not only the hospitals, but specifically long-term care facilities, make sure that they have access to an abundance of these PPEs because they seem to be in short supply? Really important question, and, and there's really two parts to that. The first answer is, that we're looking at ways that we can make sure that we cohort uh, patients and staff so that uh, the positive uh, COVID-19 uh, residents would be in one area and looked after by uh, staff in similar circumstances. The PPEs is another issue that, and I, I'm looking around at, at what's the outpouring from our communities and from the manufacturers that are switching over their lines to produce PPEs. It's amazing outpouring from the community. And uh, we are managing to make progress on the supplies. And long-term care is a priority uh, for those PPEs. And uh, we want to make sure that our staff are safe in our homes as well as our residents. Some of the uh, emergency measures that we've put in place are to address uh, the staffing issues and to provide our homes with the ability to make sure that our residents are safe and cared for as well as protection for the staff. So this is absolutely paramount. Our government has been absolutely clear about our commitment to this and long-term care for our most vulnerable populations and staff is a priority. Next question. The next question comes from Lisa Shing of CBC. Please go ahead. Hi there, uh, this question is for Minister Elliott. Uh, why haven't lab test results been provided to hospitals for the more than 340 suspected cases of COVID-19 among ICU patients? Uh, well, we have a system of reporting where we do report confirmed cases, of course. That's what we've said that we would do from the beginning. But we also have a list of suspected cases that are being dealt with in the hospitals as if they were active COVID-19 cases. We want to make sure that the same precautions are taken un until the test results come back. We have increased our testing capability and we now have a, a centralized reporting system where the labs are reporting in through the um, uh, Public Health Ontario. We've reduced the, uh, the number of outstanding cases by about half in the last few days. We're over uh, 4,000 tests per day now. We should be up to 5,000 within the next day or so. So we're continuing to calculate this information, but we are running lists of suspected cases. But we said, again, from the beginning that we would be reporting directly on confirmed cases. Thanks, 
very much. And uh, my follow-up is either for Minister Elliott or Minister Fullerton. Uh, curious about what kind of directives uh, the Ministry of Health has put into place about patients who are in care homes uh, for when they do get COVID-19 or are diagnosed with COVID-19 uh, for their care. So care in place versus being transported to hospitals. Uh, what are the directives around that? Thank you. So. It depends on the, uh, the circumstance in terms of the, um, the individual because this is something that we need to be absolutely clear about uh, for our long-term care and the, and the care for in, within our hospitals is that there will be no discrimination based on age and that we have an ability to have as long as it's possible to care for um, the resident in the home if they are managing. And this is very much individual, but guided by the directives from the um, medical officer of health and the chief medical officer of health. But those are our uh, policies and uh, procedures and protocols that are derived by the, the chief medical officer of health and his team. Okay, this will be last question. The last question comes from Randy Rath of CHCH-TV. Please go ahead. Hi, Premier. Um, I'm wondering, uh, on the weekend, um, the United States uh, FDA approved a five-minute um, COVID test that can be performed in any doctor's office. Yep. The test is manufactured by Abbott Laboratories. They have a huge presence in Ontario and Mississauga and Markham. I'm wondering if you've reached out to them to try and um, acquire this test. Oh, I'm going to pass this to the minister, but I just want to uh, mention that we, we have uh, an order with uh, Spartan. It's a company that we can do tests. We can get results in, in minutes. We have 900,000 uh, tests on order. And I believe uh, over the weekend, uh, Public Health uh, was approving it. I know uh, Health of Canada approved it over 24 hours. But uh, we, we need those uh, kits. We need the kits that we can find out within minutes rather than days. And uh, I truly believe, and I've always said from day one, I listen to my medical professionals, uh, but we need to, and we are, surging the system. Surging the system, making sure that we're, we're testing as many people as possible, making sure the, the labs are uh, ramped up, which we're doing, and uh, make sure that we get results until we can zone in on areas and if you look at uh, South Korea's model, uh, Germany's model, that's ex exactly uh, what, what they did and that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, we just need more kits uh, to get out there and uh, we're, we're getting them but it's, uh, it's not as quick as we'd, we'd like to get them and you're right, Abbott, I know they have a big uh, headquarters down in, uh, outside of Chicago, they have facilities here and I know they've been uh, uh, working on the uh, re reagent as well. So I'm going to pass this over to uh, Minister Elliott and she'll be able to answer that better than I will. Well, as the Premier indicated, we are reaching out to uh, any suppliers, including Spartan and Abbott and many others, trying to get supplies in as quickly as possible. The procurement team is uh, working 24-7. Uh, that includes both the Premier and myself getting on the phone, making calls and trying to place orders. So uh, we are receiving all the supplies that, that, that we can manage and that we can get, and we're going to continue to reach out. The other thing I would say is that there are um, great Ontario companies as well that are reaching out to us to indicate that they can change their production supply so that they can produce either masks or gowns or equipment, test equipment. So we are going to continue with that. Uh, we are receiving supplies in on a regular basis, but again, we really are asking people to, uh, to take the necessary precautions to uh, self-isolate, stay at home as much as possible so that we will be able to, uh, to keep up with the demand. Um, also, is, is there any consideration being given to uh, ramp up supports for personal care workers who are, are looking after elderly people who are remaining in their homes and simply can't go out? 
Well, yes, we are looking at making sure that they have the necessary personal protective equipment, but we're also taking a look at health human resources over the next several weeks because we know that there will be uh, situations where perhaps uh, some of the frontline workers may not be able to go to work. They may have to self-isolate for 14 days. Uh, there may be situations where they need respite care. We are providing for that. We have set up a volunteer line. We are looking at the uh, resources that are coming in. Thousands of people have volunteered to help, uh, ranging from everywhere from nurses who may not currently be in practice, they may be retired, to medical students who can help uh, with uh, some of the uh, uh, assessment centers, and from volunteers who are willing to do whatever is needed. So we are really working very hard on health human resources right now as we're looking at building capacity in terms of personal protective equipment as well. Okay, thank, thank you. you. That's great, thank, thank you everyone.